Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on maximizing stewardship and simpl simplifying church finances with ClearCard. I am thrilled to see you joining us here today. And before we dive in, um, we're going to go over some housekeeping um, uh, items. If you have any questions throughout this webinar, please use the Q&A section of Zoom to ask them. We'll have designated, designated time during this webinar for Q&A, so feel free to engage with us um, through the Q&A. So who and what is ClearCard? So ClearCard is more than just software. It's a tool designed specifically for church leaders like you, helping you maximize your stewardship. With ClearCard, you can effortlessly control your team's spending, upload receipts in real time, code new changes, new charges quickly, and automate Amazon purchases, um, tracking them in an easy-to-use app. It's really a game changer for churches looking to organize and control all of their spending. Now, without further ado, let me introduce our ClearCard presenter. So we have Owen, who is one of the three co-founders of ClearCard. Um, while attending the Air Force Academy, he fell in love with a local pastor's daughter. After they were married, Owen completed his PhD in economics and spent 20 years in finance, including running the budget for Compassion International and as a CFO and CEO for several organizations. His wife, Emily, founded and runs a Christian school in Colorado Springs, where they live with their four, four children. Um, today, Owen will guide us through a demo of ClearCard and showcase its powerful features. Owen, thank you so much for joining us here today. Before diving into the demo, um, can you please go um, cover what you will share with us today? Yeah, thanks so much, Lily, and to your team. We love our partnership with ACS Technologies. It's been a real blessing to us and to the churches we both share uh, as customers. Um, today, we're going to go over a quick overview of cards and controlling those cards, but most importantly, we're going to talk about how we can allow your team to manage their receipts, upload those, code those charges, a cool AI feature we have so that we can actually do a lot of that coding for you and save your team a bunch of time. We'll talk about Amazon business especially, because I know Amazon business is a pain point uh, for a lot of organizations. Uh, we'll talk about how we can get all these transactions into ACS, whether you're using on demand or Realm, and import those in so you no longer have to type these into your accounting software. So I know some of your finance teams will be excited about that. And then we'll do a quick overview of our reimbursements and our bill pay process as well. Awesome. Thank you, um, Owen, for giving us an overview. I'll let you dive right into the demo so they can see how wonderful ClearCard is. Fantastic. Thanks so much. And we'll, uh, great. Should, my screen sharing should be up. Let me just sh say, first of all, it really is an honor to be on with you all today. I know I've been in your role in many times. Uh, and stewardship is a big deal for us. And two sides of stewardship is how do we steward the resources God has entrusted to us and our organizations? But also, how do we steward the time of our ministry leaders uh, who uh, spend a lot of time and energy coding receipts and getting this accountability back on that side? So for us, stewardship is two sides. And I want to bring those two together today with my clear card demo for you today. First, let me just mention to you, I know some people have pain points on managing credit cards. Uh, we make that very easy at ClearCard. We are Visa partners and so we allow you to issue, manage, and control all of your own cards. I don't have time to go through all the details today, but if you're looking for a card solution where you can control budgets on cards, where you can turn them on and off, or maybe even have a type of PO process where someone has to request funding before they can actually use that card, we've got some really neat options for you there. Please reach out to us and we'll be happy to dive into that use case more specifically. But the first thing, and I'm a nerd, so I think that's going to come out today. But the first thing I want to show you that we get really excited about is how do I make transparency and accountability really easy for your whole team? So with ClearCard, all of your transactions come through to your finance team in real time. So you don't have to wait till the end of the month or log into some bad bank technology to figure out where people are spending. ClearCard shows that to you right away. Um, so this is our actual platform with real data that we have here. And what I'd like to show you is 
just as these charges come in, we've got a dashboard for you. So you can see that and see maybe you need to ask other questions or maybe you just wanna make sure these are all legitimate charges early on as they're coming in. One of the neat things I wanna show you here uh, that we've rolled out recently is we will import your chart of accounts from ACS. Again, whether on demand or Realm, uh, whichever one you're using on that front. And we have a whole AI engine that can recommend an account for that charge ahead of time uh, so that all your team has to do is review that charge and confirm that it's correct. And right now we're looking at about 92, 93% accuracy on that so that your team now only has to code maybe seven or 8% of their charges. Everything else is done automatically for you. So while you can see all of these charges as they come in, I want to demonstrate for you the experience of one of your ministry leaders by uh, using, I'm going to use this Walmart charge where I went to the other day to pick up some supplies. Uh, so let me show that to you from the user's standpoint. I'm going to share my screen with my phone. So everybody's cards are integrated with the app on their phone. So when they spend, Nelly, I actually might have to do a new screen share in order to do this. Um, let's see here. No, is that my, that is not my phone screen. I hadn't seen that. Normally I share my desktop. Um, well, I apologize here. One second, y'all. Nope, oh, that's going to be your import. I, let me see. So nobody can see that. Um, Lily, I apologize. It looks like on our presenter settings, I cannot share my phone screen um, on that front. My apologies, y'all. Well, what I would show you on that, let me just jump to this. I'll, I'll do this for you so you can see in real time. We have a really easy to use um, app so that your team can you'll get a push notification in real time on your phone um, so that right, for example, when they go to Walmart, the other day when I was at Walmart, I had a notification, push notification on my phone that said, oh, and you just spent $52.51. And I got that notification before the receipt had even printed from Walmart. So what I can do on my phone, and I'll just, I'll do this for you here so you can see it in real time. I can go into that I can take some notes, and so I'm just going to type into that my, or I'll just add my receipt here. I can type in some notes as well for what people are doing. So I will take a picture of my screen and the receipt so you can see that. That uploads to you now in real time. Um, so now you don't have to worry about those receipts that get put in a pocket or go through the wash or you never see them. We can send notifications and reminders to them. Uh, but the whole process only takes, you know, 10 seconds to upload a receipt now in real time. And then once they've done that, which I just did, you can now click on that receipt that they've added. Um, again, you can see I just took that right now as I was sitting right here. Sorry, you can't see that directly from my phone. But now you can review that in real time and say, hey, I need a better image of that receipt or this is good. That's the receipt that I need. Uh, so you don't have to worry about those paper copies as well. I'll show you in a minute how you can actually download uh, PDF receipts of those copies. But that's the idea, is instead of waiting until the end of the month, make sure your team has the tools to easily upload receipt images, take some notes on that, and you have that in real time. Now, that's really convenient for a lot of instances where maybe you're ordering something online or plane tickets or in person. Sometimes people even just take pictures of that confirmation email they get, and the IRS is perfectly happy with that. But I know Amazon is a royal pain point uh, for a lot of folks because when you order from Amazon, right, maybe you order $300 worth of supplies, Amazon might break that into five, six, seven, or even eight different charges as they ship it from various locations. And so what I'm really excited to show you now, I'm going to use my wife's account I think I mentioned to you she runs a Christian school out here. Part of what that means is she keeps about four, maybe even five Amazon drivers fully employed uh, delivering supplies to her school. So once you order from Amazon, 
Uh, it takes a couple hours sometimes, but we will put this green checkbox on here on your Amazon charges, and I'll show you what that means. That means we have created a line item detail for exactly what was a part of that shipment and that charge. So your team can go in there and code um, those. So maybe you want to send one to children's ministry and one to worship. Uh, we've also automatically attached the PDF receipt for that Amazon receipt. So you don't have to go back into Amazon or ask them to go back into Amazon and get those receipts afterwards. And we've got line item details for exactly what quantity, how much total cost, even if you're managing taxes, maybe some of you in North Carolina need help managing uh, taxes, we'll have the tax receipt there uh, as well. So excited to show you that. I'm happy to take more questions on that uh, if, if you're interested. However, really one of the real pain points that we see for a lot of organizations is we have all this data. Now what do we do with it? Well, in the past, maybe some of you have been paying someone or someone on your team has been typing these into on ACS On Demand or into Realm. Now with ClearCard, what our churches are able to do is we generate a weekly statement for you. So most of our churches are on weekly statements, some on monthly, uh, but most are on weekly statements. Then with that digital statement that we have, here's the total amount that was processed. Here's the line item details. And you have a couple of options. So I mentioned you can download all your receipts. So while we will store those for you indefinitely for years and years to come, Maybe you want a backup copy of these, or maybe you want a pastor that wants to review them and you print those off for, for him. But the real cool part is we download this. Uh, we, click, we will configure this as part of our setup with you and with your team. We will download this and it will already be in the exact format that Realm or ACS needs to import these. And so I will be able to show you. Actually, let me just show you that here real quick because um, I know we had talked about that. Um, we generate this statement for you. Um, and this statement is in the right format. We will pull these in line item uh, into ACS or in a realm. So you never have to type anything out again. It will always tie out exactly to the penny, including any returns or refunds uh, that happen on there as well. Here you can just see very briefly, you can see all the details that we pull in. So Amazon is really great at pulling in line item details for you now. So now again, I talk about accountability through transparency. Uh, now we have that end to end from the credit card user all the way into your ACS Technologies platform. Um, one kind of final thing that I want to share with you before we move to a QA and a is this idea of bill pay. Um, I know a lot of organizations out there are, can be pretty advanced on their bill pay, but a lot of organizations are using something like uh, their bank bill pay. And that, for us finance professionals, that can cause us some concern is I want to make sure not too many people have access to my bank account. So what ClearCard has built is a full bill pay solution so that you can, we can set up an email for you uh, where these will automatically be imported in, uh, or you can manually upload them yourselves. We store that invoice, an image of that invoice for you. You can create payment terms. You can adjust payment methods. So if you would like to do ACH payments, you can enter those details in, or we can send notifications even to your vendors on that front to enter their own uh, details. We can also do this for reimbursements as well for your team, or we can send physical checks uh, for you on your behalf. Now, so I wanted you to know that we have that. Our reimbursements platform is very similar. It feeds into this, and so it's just a link where people can digitally create uh, a request for reimbursement, and we actually route that through our invoice platform uh, for you as well. So the final thing, uh, Lily, that I'd like to maybe share with everybody before I know we have some time to jump to some Q&A is uh, pricing. Everyone wants to know what does this cost? And so let me just address that ahead of time. We are Visa partners at ClearCard. What that means is we're able to uh, make some money through our Visa partnership. In conjunction with that, we can also share with you uh, some of that as in the form of cash back. So depending on your church's level of spend, we may be able to offer you uh, cash back as well on that front. But then most, so while that cards can be free, most of our churches are picking the $78 a month option. And what that allows for you is two AP admins to manage all of your bill pay, to manage all of your uh, reimbursements, as well as unlimited cards 
um, and unlimited users on the card side as well. So $78 a month in addition to getting cash back from ClearCard is what most of our churches are choosing to do on that front. So I hope that's a helpful overview. And I know uh, we've got a lot of professionals here on the call with us today. I know Adam on my team is helping us manage some of those questions. So I think it's a great opportunity maybe to, to focus on some of the things you want to focus on uh, and make this useful for you. But again, as I mentioned, if there's some real specifics on this that you've seen, uh, we'll be showing a link at the end. You can schedule a demo there. You can reach out to us directly. Just let us know how we can uh, support you and, and, and bless you as, as part of this stewardship journey uh, with, with the resources we have. So thank you so much, Lily. Hey, hey Owen, um, may, maybe I can uh, help guide some Q&A. We've had a lot of great questions coming in. I want to some of those I've, I've been trying to answer some of them specifically um, in the chat. You guys can see those there. Um, some questions about um, who can code, right? So both your cardholders and your central finance folks, finance folks can see everything in real time to uh, to code those. Um, does it work with other current cards, Visa cards, Lowe's cards, Walmart cards, et cetera? And it does not, right? So just to be clear there, these are, um, you, you would need to um, use our cards for all these integrated features um, and are, they are Visa cards, as Owen mentioned. Um, and some some great questions about Amazon business, maybe just point folks to the answered column in the Q&A, just about um, the timing of the, is it tied to a shipment or an order? It is tied to a shipment. I think that's one of the great things we've done there in that integration is that um, the Amazon, right? You could order 10 items, but if only five are shipped, they only charge you for the five. And so we get the detail uh, on those five in that example uh, and provide the receipt and all the line item detail for what's actually shipped uh, as it corresponds to the charge. Um, and then, so that's in the answer and then some of the open questions. So uh, about approvals. So um, let me just take a moment, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe Owen, maybe you could just show that, but I'll maybe conceptually just explain that we do also, um, offer transaction approvals for credit card transactions. Really, you know, the the philosophy behind this is just that some churches do want to capture that from, a, from an auditability and just a, you know, were they appropriate standpoint. And so we send automated reports by person to a defined manager um, at a, you know, at a configurable timeline. So as an example, most folks will set up a weekly report and for each cardholder, their manager gets a weekly report. They can review it. It's what Owen's showing you here. You can ask questions about it. You could, all that's documented and, and, and notifications happen based on those. And the manager can review those and approve those. Um, and then the stat, the, that approval status is, uh, is tracked at a transaction level. And you can see that um, back on the, on, the, on the charges tab if you want to look at that. So I think that was a, a great question from James on approval authority. Um, is the integration with Realm Accounting bidirectional? Um, uh, it is. It is a file based. So it is not an API driven integration today. It is a file based. So we have a. Um, it is both Realm and um, ACS products. Um, it, we've got a a configured. Um, CSV file that you can import. And so you can you can certainly load all your vendors and chart of accounts and things via files and we'll help you with that in the implementation. And then in the transactions, um, we uh, it is a file base of the transaction that Owen, Owen showed a few minutes ago. Adam, let me piggyback on that too. And I do yeah. want to clarify, I know we have a lot of people on here that use either ACS on the mount demand or realm for their accounting. I also know we have some people on here that are using ACS or realm for some other areas, maybe church management, but not necessarily for accounting. I do want to make it very clear for other accounting packages. We do have integrations. The most common one we see is QuickBooks Online. So if you are looking for some bi-directional uh, integrations, we also have that for QuickBooks Online or some mm -hmm. of the others. So happy to talk through that with you. We haven't found an accounting platform yet uh that we haven't been able to integrate with so put us to the test and would love the chance to uh show you how an integration can save time and 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 boost productivity for your team there as well right great um let me quick hit a few more of these um 
So will it create an AP liability? Yes, that is the classic way to import. We will we'll create a credit card holding account, a liability account that these transactions will go into. Uh, and then the payment to us um, clears that out, which is the typical way to do that. Um, that was a question from Anonymous, but that's okay. Um, does it integrate with AP or is it strictly through GL? I'm not sure I'm... I'm Maybe we should dig into that with you. I think I think you're talking about modules within one of the ACS products. Um, it's not coming in typically as an invoice. It is through, um, you know, the um, it is a journal entry import, um, but typically to a credit card holding account. And so we can take you through that process in an implementation if you want to uh, ask further. And then. Um, some questions about checks. Maybe we'll hit that quickly on bill pay in just a moment. Um, there is no separate implementation fee besides the $78 a month. Um, and Adam, then, I, let me speak yeah. to implementation because I know that sure. comes up with a lot of our churches. We recognize that a lot of our church staff are, you have a lot of work, a lot of tasks. And so I know there's a lot of technology platforms out there that you sign up for them and say, hey, congratulations, here's your new tech platform. Go figure out how to use it. Maybe here's some YouTube tools. We recognize that doesn't necessarily work in the church uh, space or nonprofit space as well, more broadly. So part of our implementation, plan on two, sometimes three 30-minute meetings with our team. Michelle from our team was a church administrator in Virginia. She loved it so much. She's come on with us full-time and absolutely great to work with. Um, so likely Michelle or her team will be working with you over the course of two to three 30-minute meetings where we actually do it on Zoom and you share your screen and we coach you through setting up new users, ordering cards, importing chart of accounts, connecting to Amazon. Uh, so we do that with you. Uh, we come alongside and we're a part of your team. You're not limited to two or three meetings, but like I said, 60 to 90 minutes with our team is typically what it takes to get everything set up. So it's not a big lift and we're there with you every step of the way. Great. There's a couple other um, just fees questions. So let me just hit that again. Um, so the, if you just want to use the card product, um, that is free, right? So I think, I mean, and then what, to Owen's point, what most folks do for the $78 a month um, is uh, that gets you everything, right? That's bill pay, that's reimbursements, um, uh, as well as all of the card products. And so that gets you two um, admins. We don't, so um, there was a comment about bill.com earlier by somebody. Um, so one of the big differences from a business model standpoint is for all their bill pay stuff, they charge you for every single user, um, including approvers, et cetera. We only charge for your admin users uh, in your bill, and that's and that's what that seventy eight dollars a month covers. Admin users are like your core AP folks. Approvers are free. Basic card holders, standard users are free, um, and so that's what that gets you is the two core admins. Which most churches, that's what they want and need. Um, so I think we're just trying to make that simple for folks. Um, there are some other. There's some questions about checks. And uh, and other fees, uh, and so we I, we didn't go into all that detail. There are some per check and per ACH fees. Um, the are the checks are dollar fifty. The ACH are a dollar. We just add that to your bill at the end of the month. Um, to, you know, it kind of looks like a, a credit card charge, right, on your account. Um, and so um, that is one other deep piece of detail there. Um, we do, there's a question about checks, physical checks. We actually print, mail, and send those for you on your behalf. Um, Owen's showing you that. You set up the, you know, the vendor as a payment method, and we do all of that for you. Those checks clear right out of your bank account. So we set it up where the, the numbers on the check come right from your bank account. Um, we're not sitting in the middle with, uh, you know, any other type of account. Um, and so I think that answers all of the business model questions. Oh, there was one other question about interest rate and things. So to be clear, these are Visa credit, what's called a credit bin on Visa, but they, it is a charge card model. So we we do not expect people to hold balances and charge interest. It's not how we're making money. So we we expect the bill, the bill to be paid in full at the end of the, your billing period. Um, so that is one other piece of detail there. 
Adam, I, I think it's helpful to note there also. Yeah. We're, so we recognize we're morally opposed to the high interest debt uh, that a lot of credit cards try to monetize on. If you forget to pay or, or something, you're out at the office. Um, so that is not an option for us. And so we stick very closely to the charge model where, again, you pay off your balance in full every single time. So we really don't even have an option for you to roll over into high interest debt. It's not an option on our platform. Yep. Uh, Pam Barnes with a great question about um, does the person have the option? Uh, so if the purchaser codes a purchase, does the finance office have the option to edit those before entering? Absolutely. Um, we'll we'll do that. And um, and um, you, you have the option to do that before it, it goes in. Um, and I know we are we are low on time. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Owen. What are you going to say? I was going to say, I know most of your teams always code their things exactly correctly. <laughs> However, for the very rare instance that your team doesn't code something exactly correctly, this is your chance to come in and review that. And so if this wasn't office supplies, for example, your final review, maybe you want to come back in here and you want to say this is job supplies, for example, if you want to switch the account. So at the end of the day, your accounting professionals have the final say on all of these, and you don't have to do this extensive back and forth with your team to make sure everything's coded correctly before you import it into your accounting software. Great. Uh, one other quick uh, coding question about limiting the codes for different types of users in your organization. And so to answer that, there is there are some options for us to configure that in a way that limits the codes exposed to specific people. However, I will say almost all of our customers have gone away from that because of our AI coding, right? So that is, we are, we are learning who the cardholder is, the context of that transaction, and getting increasingly better at, make, at getting that classified correctly. So we would say instead of limiting it and trying to manage all that configuration, it's better to um, keep it exposed. That gives you sort of flexibility to code things and let us learn and just keep making better recommendations on that coding as you go. So, okay. I think we are at time. So we want to be respectful of everyone's time there. This will be recorded. I think from the, um, Lily and shared with everyone, lots of great engagement and questions here. Um, and hope we can have some one-on-one -on -one conversations with many of you in the future. Yes. Thank you guys. Thank you for a wonderful demo and also for doing such a wonderful job um, answering everyone's questions. What you're seeing here on the screen is a QR code. I'll let Owen or Adam just um, go over what the next steps are if your church is interested in ClearCard. Hey, thanks so much, Lily. Yeah, feel free to, this takes you to our, our church's landing page. You can book a demo there. Uh, you can also look us up, uh, Adam, maybe you can even throw, you know, my email, uh, on the Q and a, uh, right there as well. Feel free to shoot us an email. Most of our churches before they make a decision to change everything over, they'll often do a trial period with us. And that's, we're great on that. There's no commitments for us in the long run. We view it as our job to earn your trust and earn your business, uh, every step of the way. So let us know if maybe there's a part of your organization, maybe it's facilities or it where you're having some challenges, uh, and you want to test it out, uh, Amazon, especially if you want to test that out. So let us know how best we could serve you. Uh, part of our passion is just making it really exactly what you need rather than just here's the offering that, that we give. So feel free to reach out. We'd love to engage with you. And uh, really means a lot that you give some of your really busy schedule uh, to us today. And hopefully we, we can make good on that and save you a bunch of time in the future. Awesome. Thank you, um, Owen. Thank you, Adam, for joining us today. Thank you, everyone who is on this webinar. Um, we hope that you found this webinar um, very informative and insightful. Um, and remember that with ClearCard, you have the power to streamline your church's financial um, processes and maximize stewardship. As a reminder, you will get a recording of this webinar um, after um, a couple days after uh, this webinar ends. So if you want to revisit any part of today's session um, or wanna share it with someone on your team, you will have that opportunity. Again, thank you for joining us today and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks, God bless. Thank you. Bye.